So how many women are on the panel? I don't remember. Roughly eight, nine, I would say. Okay, so less than ten. And of the, the eight or nine women, you do remember because you said eight or nine. Roughly, yeah. Okay. There were two trans women? Yeah, two. Okay, so this is not a knock against trans people. I, I don't believe that you care about that. I don't believe any conservative said Because if it was, where the f was the uproar against all of the creepy f pageant shows before the trans bathroom became a thing? Because of that issue, I will never believe a conservative when they tell the me creep. they care about trans kids being groomed or whatever. I just don't believe it. I think it's a niche issue because Republicans have no economic platform. Republicans have no goals for the country. All they can do is obstruct Democrats. They have no idea about what they want to do with anything. So they focus on these really niche cultural issues. There was a survey that came out asking what percentage of the American population do you think is trans? And I think people said like 24%. <laughs> Holy sh**. What I want to understand is that you were recently on a episode of Vice on a panel, mm -hmm. uh, what you were discussing feminism and mm -hmm. modern women. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest takeaway from that episode that you learned? Oh my gosh, that was the most crazy people I've ever met in my life. Um, we were there for like six hours and they edited it down to like 45 minutes. That's how editing works. Yeah, yeah. Where, where were you, in London? Um, no, I was in New York. Okay, New York, gotcha. Um, what was my biggest takeaway? Uh, I didn't really take, it was just, I just, it was nuts. That's what I would say. Really, but you, did you watch it? Yeah. What were your thoughts on what Pearl had going on there? Um, obviously, I disagree with everything Pearl says, and almost all of the things have to do with women. But my, my biggest issue with um, with progressives cutting out conservatives from every platform they can mm -hmm. is they lose the ability to defend any of their ideas. And then at the end of the day, I think they just end up looking horrible. Like you'll get questions of like, well, what is a what is what's one barrier? I think you asked, what's one barrier that you have as a woman in society? And it's like, well, I'm handicapped. I don't have any legs. Or it's like, well, I'm black. Or like, it's like okay, well, what about the woman part? Right? Nobody could answer that question. So you get a panel full of people mm -hmm. that probably all have like feminist scholar bullshit in their Twitter bios. Not a single person can answer that question. So yeah, I don't know. That things like that like really bother me when people are supposed to be defending these ideas and they can't because they don't talk to conservatives anymore. So you're, there were no conservatives on the panel. You're saying there is, she was, and then there is two. I would say um, there is how like, many how many women is, were on the panel? There was supposed to be like they how many how many women? Let me just use uh, I don't that know term. eight nine maybe. And they but, were all women. No, uh, no. Wow, oh, careful! No. Slippery slope. <laughs> um, there was four that were supposed to be conservative, but I would say they got two middle of the road and okay. two actual. How many trans women? Two. Two trans women yeah. out of eight people. And then they were trying to the tell me I had to play against against okay. men in sports. Oh my god! It's, it's always the most unathletic people. It's the most unathletic people that are saying I have to put my body on the line. By the way, okay, <laughs> I, I didn't see the panel, but I gotta watch it, and then I'm gonna come back to you. Did you see it by any chance? No. See the panel. No. So how many women are on the panel? I don't remember. Roughly eight, nine, I would say. Okay, so less than ten. And of well, the, the eight or nine women, you do remember because you said eight or nine. Roughly, yeah. Okay. There were two trans women? Yeah, two. Okay, so this is not a knock against trans people. How many uh, white, black, Latino, Asian women, how, uh, how many fat women, short women? Give me a breakdown if you could, oh, real quick. Um, it was like the most diverse panel. Was there was really like fat diverse, people, there were yeah. people of color, there were people so of different religions. A diverse, so they were yeah. solving for diversity. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so if you're solving for, for inclusion and diversity and equity and all that fun stuff mm -hmm. that people talk about, what percentage of women are trans in general? I would guess less 0. than 0.1%. percent. So why would you even have one trans woman on that panel, much less two? So, okay, if you're going to have one trans woman on that panel, cool, I get it, throw that in. But you know how they say the system is rigged. That is rigging they, the system. There's just, no need to have two trans no. women on a panel representing women. They were ju they just literally wanted them there so they could tell me I have to play sports with dudes. <laughs> like that's literally what they wanted them there for. Bullshit. And, and no, it's absolutely bullshit because it's like it, one, it's it's always the most unathletic people telling the athletes what we got to do. And I'm like, you want me to go up against guys? Women, we don't have much opportunity in women's sports and you're going to give the little opportunity we have to men? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, oh no. So you so, must agree with her on that. You don't think you don't think trans yeah, like the men only should be on. playing. So, on this topic. But so yeah, that was course, the only thing you agree with. Like the, this was like part of the big controversy that I got banned from Twitch on in the middle of. For what? That cis women and trans women shouldn't be competing in the same leagues is ridiculous. Yeah. And just for the record, this, this term cis woman is that just a woman? That's what us progressives use to what you would say just a woman. Yeah. Explain like, what the hell this like, cis thing is. It's, there's cis like, is, you either trans or cis, basically. So cisgender is like, you're, the gender you're presented as trans is like you're something different, basically, yeah. So like a trans woman versus a cis woman. What? Don't look what? at me like that. You don't.
understand that? Come on, we're still <laughs> I'm young. learning okay? here, bro. Yeah. Okay. I'm learning here. Uh -huh. So if you're just a woman, you're, you're no longer a woman. You're now you're a cis woman. Well, if you're talking in trans space, that's probably what they'd use. Listen, I already got the f***ing blue hair, okay? You're going to put me on the f***ing stand for trans issues, too? I'm, I'm, Jesus Christ. You're the one that got canceled you talk for. About an affirmative action next? Well, what else do you want to nail me on? Oh my god. So, oh okay. yeah, cis There's women versus trans women. So that's the only thing you agree. Oh my gosh, sorry, sorry. Go so, on. just to be clear, you don't think that trans women should be participating None. in Zero. women's sports? Zero. Fully agree. No, we also have the Leah Thomas thing, right? No, it's yeah. rid it's ridiculous. I don't think they should be in our bathrooms either. Yeah. Huh. Like, I just, I don't agree with that. Yeah. Okay, uh, the bathrooms thing is silly. Obviously, you should go to the bathroom that, like, you express as. What? Express as? Do you, do you all know who Blair White is? We can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want Blair White walking into the bathroom with like a little boy? Or do you want Buck Angel walking into a bathroom with like a little girl? Obviously just, we believe that you should probably go to the, the bathroom that you express oh, yeah. as. Would, that makes the most sense. I would sense. just prefer to not see dicks in the locker room. That's just my opinion. Like I feel like bathroom. that's a fair ask, that's yeah. That's just my <laughs> personal opinion. And I, I also think it's like a safety concern. Yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that the majority of trans people are going to take advantage of it. It's just I don't. I think that opens the door from to someone that will. I don't and think I just, so. This I is it's never. There's not a single time like the legendary like trans rapist mm -hmm. that's like making their way through the bathrooms. Like and the fact that if this person did exist, like some woman would be running through the store and she goes into the bathroom and like the sign stops the trans person mm -hmm. from going in and raping her. Like yeah. also, no offense. I have a son. I want all the trans rapists in the women's bathroom, okay? Like, that doesn't make sense either, right? Like, if there are all these rapists, uh -huh. why do you want them going to the boys' bathroom instead? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. I, I reject the whole bathroom narrative is super silly. Mm -hmm. I, I, agree. I don't think most I people agree. care that so much. You I think you would be okay people... with a man walking into the bathroom just... Oh, a man dressed as a woman walking into the women's bathroom. I think that whatever That's you... That's clearly a man. I think, that what, all. I think that whatever you clearly express as is probably where you go. But they're confused. If you have a beard with a wig on and a dress and you're walking in the girl's bathroom, you're not a woman. Sure. You're may confused. Maybe <laughs> not, but like, what's, what is happening in there? Like, I, bro, I don't know. I, I, I have experienced that. I've, I've experienced that. I've experienced that. We have to deal with this. Well, we would have to deal with trans men coming in the... In male bathroom as well, right? <laughs> it's, I it's think just, they should have their own bathroom. That's really it's well, inappropriate. Agree. Okay, you think there should I, I be trans bathrooms? Okay, yes. sure. If you want Let that. there be a you trans just, bathroom. Believe it or think, not, there I are just, countries. There are countries. Okay, where you can go. I spent a lot of time in Stockholm because my wife is Swedish. There are gender neutral bathrooms. Nobody's getting raped. It's crazy. Yeah. Everybody goes in. They all have their little fucking stuff. Well, Everybody comes out. This. Nobody's raping right. each other. Let me say one thing. Perspective of a locker room. Like in a locker room, you walk around naked. Like true that. An athlete. Number one, a lot of conservatives will use this bathroom thing as a straw man argument. All my kids are getting raped in bathrooms. It's not happening. It's not even but that. Here, here's an indicator, here's a case example uh -huh. of why they say that the America is crumbling okay. and China is thriving. Hear me out. Yeah. You think they're having trans bathroom <laughs> arguments in countries like China no. that is lapping USA I as agree. far as like GDP? I agree. Here we are on a panel. We could talk about anything and we're going ham on bathroom trans bearded dudes. I it's, agree, yeah. And we're just spending time as a country talking about stuff that doesn't affect our lives even a little bit. I think to Okay, some... hold on. Whereas <sighs> in other countries, they are like, get shit done, work, make shit happen, let the Americans play their little, uh, you know, hide the hot dog game in the trans fucking bathroom situation while we're getting lapped by China. That's my problem with this. I agree. It's with like you. this is such not an issue yeah. that anyone gives shit a bit about. And this goes back to my bigger point. If there's a woman's panel and there's eight women on the panel, <laughs> you're telling me you have two trans women? Okay? If you had a hundred women on a panel, a hundred, you can maybe, maybe make the case for making one trans woman. Maybe. <sighs> on a ten woman panel, you're putting two trans on there? Yeah. Get the and fuck I'm, out of here, and Vice. I'm, and I'm fascist because I don't yeah. want to play with men in, the, in sports. Yeah, I the guess. sports thing is fair. The thing <laughs> yeah. that you brought up, first of all, China has like 2 billion people, okay? 1.5. They're going to pass this eventually. All right. I know. Probably. But, okay. Yeah, the, it's, the not gonna be, it's not going to be because we're talking about trans bathrooms. bathrooms, okay? But, but also, the more we focus on that. Sure. I'll agree with you. We're then tell losing. conservatives to stop obsessing over it so much. I agree with okay? you. All right. Because that's the shit argument. that's brought up by conservatives all the Time. Okay. They want to agree with you. But then, dude, liberals always take the bait. Exactly. That, that is true. Progressives take the bait. Yeah. I agree. They do. They get I, would just, I would just like to say, I just would rather not see 
in the bathroom. That's yeah, just my agreeing. personal preference. And it's not even about being raped. Like, you can be out and you're at a dinner place and they're at a bar. This person comes in drunk. They're aggressive. They're a man in a woman's bathroom. They cut the line. Now it's a fight. And then he knocks her out. Like, there's more than just being raped. You can have an overly... Like, I've experienced that. I was in the bathroom. This man walked in with a beard and a dress and he thought I stole his phone and he got aggressive with me and I had to leave the bathroom. I'm the woman in the bathroom. And it's like, you feel the need to come in here because you feel like I'm dressed this way so I can come into the bathroom. That's where it, like, for me, it's like, that's, I have more of a worry of that than like being raped in a bathroom, if you want me to be honest. by this I'm with subject. you. I'd rather not see in the bathroom too. The, it's... Yeah, I mean, I don't look at Including other guys' Including a male's dicks. bathroom. Yeah, I don't usually look at dicks in the bathroom, but I don't know guys, if there's other bathroom habits. PSA guys are out there, okay? <laughs> for I'm... all the guys in the bathroom, face forward, all right? There's no talking to the side <laughs> in the urinal. How's your day? There's no coming from behind, giving a massage. <laughs> this ain't the fucking <laughs> movies. Along came Paul, all right? Well, I'm... Face forward, don't talk. I mean, I'm just That thinking... goes to Uber drivers as well. Just drive me around. I'm just thinking, like... Of locker rooms. So when you're locked, like you walk around half naked when you're in locker rooms. Like, I don't want a dude in the bathroom. I agree with you. Yeah. By God, the way, it's such a weird American gears, fascination shifting with like gears. nudity and boobs and dicks and everything. It's like so fucking cancerous. At, yeah, it's like I'm so fucking so weird. Well, look at the Holy rise shit. of all the confusion with, the, with what's going on. There's kids being taught by drag queens at school. Like, this is a rise of it. It becomes an issue where it's like you have. People who are, oh, you know, change your gender and, and do all these things. And it's like, you, there's a time and a place for that. And to force it upon people who makes them feel uncomfortable, like, that's also unfair as well. And for me to be forced to accept it, that's also like, why do I have to accept this man in the bathroom? I, 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 just, I, don't, believe, I, I, I don't believe that you care about that. I don't believe any conservative said Because if it was, where the f*** was the uproar against all of the creepy f***ing pageant shows before the trans bathroom shit became a thing? Because of that issue, I will never believe a conservative when they tell me they care about trans kids being groomed or whatever. I just don't believe it. I think it's a niche issue because Republicans have no economic platform. Republicans have no f***ing goals for the country. All they can do is obstruct Democrats. They have no idea about what they want to do with anything. So they focus on these really niche fucking cultural issues. There was a survey that came out asking what percentage of the American population do you think is trans? And I think people said like 24%. <laughs> Holy shit. I just... I. I, like, there are some people where I'd buy the argument that they're obsessed or they're worried about, like, kids or whatever. But, like, prior to this, like, people would post pictures of taking their, like, nine-year-old boys to Hooters, and it would be a funny fucking Facebook picture. Or you have all of the, the really creepy, really weird pageantry shit. Uh, and nobody seemed to care about any of it back then. But now the trans people are involved. It's, like, a, the worst thing ever. So I just don't buy it. I don't believe it. But I don't it. let's leave that there right there. Okay. So um, you getting back to the Vice episode... Mm -hmm. You started off by saying the trans thing, the, the women in the trans in sports, was the one thing you agreed with Pearl on. What did you fundamentally disagree that Pearl said? Because she's a pretty reasonable girl. What did you disagree with? Oh, man, you're going to tax my memory here. Um, I, I think that the wholesale idea of, like, women have it easier in every single thing or there are, like, no cultural roadblocks preventing women from doing anything, I think it's, like, a really crude analysis of where we're at socially. That's what I would say. So you're saying that she's discounting how... Hard yeah, I think that are? there are issues that women face in a lot of different areas when it comes to, like, rising in terms of success or in being included in certain, like, okay, types so of... Okay, th so this is a very interesting dynamic that you guys have going <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. You're the man saying that, like, defending women, and she's the woman shitting on women, essentially. Is that the dynamic I'm understanding? <laughs> <laughs> so she's basically saying this is what it is like to be a I, woman. I would, and say shitting. And I would say there's no barriers to entry today. But no, I don't think Pearl believes there's no issues that women face. That's different, right? No, that's literally what she just said. There's no barriers. No, there's well, no, 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 literally what she said was it's easier for women than men. No, there's a difference between there's no barriers to entry and there's no issues that a woman can face. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't say there's no issues a woman can face, is there? Would you? I mean, there are issues that women face, but yeah, I would exactly. say overall it's easier for women than men. Yeah. I like probably, if, yeah. Easier, easier in what regard? What are we talking about here? I mean, I just think just as being a man versus being a woman, you're saying it's easier to be. A I woman? mean, OK, I'll give you an example. So I worked a sales job. Right. And when I worked in that sales job, I was at a big like corporate company. And I feel like I got special treatment because I was a woman. And most of the guys and I was the only girl in the office. And most of the guys would agree because like people were more willing to help you when you're a young woman. I mm -hmm. in my experience. Yeah. So 
I can't speak to your personal experience, mm -hmm. but so this is something that I hear a lot. Mm -hmm. When women are succeeding in certain types of environments, they do get special treatment, but all of those women's careers have a time limit on them, which is until a manager or a boss tries to fuck them, and when they say no, they're basically fucked in that job. Mm. This is a story that I hear time and time and time and time and time again. Do you think this happens ever? Quite often the yes. boss loses his job. No. Absolutely every not. Time he, absolute, he every time the story goes public, but you don't hear the story that goes public. Like, the, this happens to... I've heard this from almost every single woman working in entertainment and working in any industry peripheral to this, that if you're a moderately attractive woman working, yeah, like you're working, you might be succeeding, but you never know if you're actually succeeding based on the merits of your work or if it's because somebody wants to fuck you. And when somebody tries to fuck you, if you shut them down, you're fucked because whoever's above you hates you now and they're never going to fucking promote you or work with you anymore. And then you slowly basically get ghosted out of whatever job you're working. Is if you're that a generalization you go to HR, that... you make a million dollars. Do what? Or you go to HR and the dude gets fired and then you get a settlement. Nice. That, it, that just doesn't happen most of the time. Yeah. I, I think with a, especially like PUA, Red Pill guys live in this delusional world where like every guy is getting false sex claims, every creepy boss or pervert is getting fired. No, I don't believe everyone, that. Yeah, this happens like 1.001% of the time. Like it's very, very rare that somebody actually gets caught or called out on this. Because usually actually, when these guys are propositioning, you, you, you don't even, they're not really even being 100% forward with it, right? So you're not going to get them on anything, right? Actually, 8% of the U.S. population claims they've been falsely accused. That's... Okay, mm -hmm. but with that poll, was that poll falsely accused to the police? Mm -hmm. Or was that poll like my friend told another friend that somebody mm -hmm. like raped me? It was probably the latter. It was absolutely the latter. Mm -hmm. Because 8% of false rape allegations mm -hmm. to the police, everybody would be talking about it. I know mm -hmm. that's not true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you on the false rape accusations. You're as likely to get convicted as you are to get struck by lightning. I've read that stat. Mm -hmm. huh. So, again, you disagree with Pearl on mm -hmm. the fundamental situation that women have it easier than men. Here's my perspective. Argue, counter back, push back. Mm -hmm. I always ask this question. I said, who has it harder out there, men or women? And constantly I hear, well, men have it harder, bro. We got to dig the ditches. We got to have the tough jobs. Mm -hmm. We're the one that got to pay the bills. Men have it harder. And I said, little food for thought. Here's why I think women have it harder in today's society. Mm -hmm. I want to open up to you guys. As a man, I'm all about clarity. Mm -hmm. As a man, it might be hard to make money to be fit, to learn game, to pick up chicks, to be successful. It might be hard, but at least you know the pattern for success. At least there's a blueprint. Here's what you need to do. Put a fucking nice suit on or some nice sweatpants for destiny. <laughs> Look good, get your ass out there, meet people, succeed, make money, the world's your oyster. Now, what's your advice to women? Is it get out there, get a career, get a job, kill it? Maybe, or is it be a good wife, be submissive, mm -hmm. don't be a fucking bitch, like don't go on OnlyFans, be a good housewife, stay in the kitchen, be a traditional woman. Which one is it? Because it's totally polarizing opposite advice mm -hmm. for women. So again, I'm all about clarity. It's very me easy for me to look in the camera, talk to you guys out there and be like, you're too fat, you're too lazy, stop smoking weed, stop watching porn, get your ass out there, work, do your thing. You'll find success, done, blueprint. Mm -hmm. As a woman, what do you say to a woman? Go get a job, go to college, be a boss, babe. Now you're single and lonely at 40. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't, don't get a job, you know, get, your, get yourself a husband, Fig like, let your, like let the man lead, you be the follower. Mm -hmm. It's like, now you're divorced at 40 mm -hmm. because you're in a sexless marriage. So it is very hard for a woman. So my argument is, it's actually a lot harder for a woman to decide what to do. Mm -hmm. What's your argument to that, Pearl? Yeah, I mean, it depends what outcome you want. So, I mean, I think you make different choices based on the outcome you want. Okay. So how do you know? But like this goes back to my college thing is how do you know what your outcome you mm -hmm. want when you're 16, 17, mm -hmm. 18 years old? Mm -hmm. Very hard to do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's definitely a challenge that women have. I agree with you. Yeah. What are your thoughts? I, I don't like the, the saying like one is harder or one is easier. Mm -hmm. I think that women have very unique challenges they face. I think men have unique challenges they face. Um, I don't know if I would ever say that one is harder or one is easier. Mm -hmm. Like if you are a pretty woman, you can get your feet in the door in a lot of different ways mm -hmm. that men can't. But then you get sexually harassed. But yeah, but then there's the trade-off is that yeah. everybody's trying to f you, right? That's yeah. a pro, everybody's trying to f you, but it's also a big con that everybody's trying to f you. I think of all like the archetypes of women that I've met in my life, I feel like really hard working but very pretty women have it probably the worst because they're constantly gaslighting themselves into having no idea if they're actually achieving or you know being successful or if everybody's just like basically giving them handouts because they want to 
from eventually. And like living in that kind of like duality is a very, very confusing place to be. Like as a man, I ne like if I'm getting credit for something, <laughs> as much as I like to believe it, it's not because some woman wants to f me. No, no, it's because uh, I'm actually succeeding no, no, somewhere. No, right? so they all want yeah. to f you, bro. Sure, yeah. <laughs> the but only like, reason I have you on the show is because sure. we're all trying to. F but for like a woman, yeah, you legitimately have no f idea. Like, am I performing well? My boss gave me a lot of compliments. My coworkers seem to like me. Am I getting a leg up everywhere? Because you do get a lot of help if you're a woman. If you're a woman in computer science, you're the only woman in the class. Well, at least for white women, you're getting a lot of help in that class mm -hmm. compared to anybody else. Let right? me recap um, what you just said, bro, because that's yeah. very powerful. If you're if you're a hardworking, working, attractive woman, then what? You, you never know. Like, are you successful on your own merits, or is everybody around you just gaslighting you into thinking that while well, they're trying to? F I think a woman okay. would know. A woman. Well, I was just like, a you would know, like, oh, I, I really put in work, like, I achieved this recognition because this work is, it's phenomenal. Versus, like, you can tell by how they address you, how they speak with you. Because I do agree with you. You're mm -hmm. in a workplace, and uh, there are men who want that intention. But as a woman, you can approach, approach that situation knowing that that's their intention. So I think as a woman, like, you can determine, like, am I getting this credible, uh, am I getting credit be based on my work or am I get cre getting credit based on my looks? Like, as a woman who is attractive, like, you can tell. Like, you can tell when a man's flirting with you, you can tell when a man wants something from you, you can see that. I think I, I would agree with you for the most part, but I think there's two things. One, I think every attractive woman goes through a point in her life where she realizes, like, a lot of this has come from my looks. I right. think that comes a little bit later than, at least as a guy, we would assume. Right. Um, and then two, I think that it gets really hard around like edge cases where you're like trailblazing, right? If you're like in a sales department mm -hmm. and you've got like fucking numbers, mm -hmm. right? And you can see like, obviously I'm outperforming, that's fine. But if you're working in like entertainment or if you can reach out to like CEOs of companies and they're mm -hmm. calling you back or if you're getting like invited to podcasts or whatever, mm -hmm. there's always this like whatever. And I think a lot of guys are really good at disguising their intentions, where a guy can treat you in the most respectful manner possible until you're traveling to some convention in the same place somewhere, and then he tries to get you drunk and rape you. Um, I think that it's really, really difficult sometimes to feel out like the fuzzy edge cases. If there's guys that are like blatantly stuck empty, you can tell. But I think it's just a weird thing for women to always have that in the back of our head, whereas for guys, we never, there's not a time in our lives. You can make that argument for a really though. successful guy that you never know if the girl's into him for him or his money. Very good point. That is true as Very well. Very good point. Is Go that, deeper. I you're think saying, it's better for women to hide that. You're a guy. Well, yeah, if you're the guy, more successful you are, you're like, does she love me for me? Or the fact that I make a million dollars a yes. year? That's and something and that is a very good point. You know who's even better at disguising their intentions than men? Women are. Women yes. are much better playing the game. Oh. I agree with you. I, Go ahead, Alex. Go deeper, buddy. Are we going to talk about you. the women that flirt with their bosses to get up, to get ahead, too? Yeah. Of course. So a lot of times, like these girls will flirt with their bosses and then play victim later. Yeah, well, like, fundamentally agree on that. But Alex, I want to kind of say where you were at. You're saying, all right, cool, we're shitting on guys and being kind of shady or whatever. Women can, holy we can, shit, Women can be girls. just as shady when they're messing with a successful guy, yeah. especially in Miami. And a lot of these rich guys, they get completely screwed. They are like, f they get trained for all their money because they f the wrong girl and then she yeah. took pretty much everything. What have you seen? Have you seen an actual I've seen, example? I've had countless clients who've had that happen to them. Yeah, they got married early, then they, you know, their business became successful. Or they got married when their business was already successful to the wrong kind of girl, right? So screening yeah. is important for both genders. I don't think it's only something that women have to screen with so the people in their life. I've, Men also I've, have to screen. Real quick, I, that yeah. could be possible. I would be curious what type of guy it is. Maybe because I might be, this might be my bubble because of the industry that I work in, mm -hmm. but it's very easy for me to tell immediately how a girl feels about me if she's like fake or not. Because like, you either know everything that I'm involved in or not. Like if a girl came up to me and she wanted to have like an in-depth conversation about like fiscal policy to try to fake me out for my money. I mean, I'll pay her off. Like, good job. You, you, like, don't, think can, wait, you don't think you women can, yeah. think a woman can tell when a guy's trying to them. Most women can tell that too. No, I think women can tell, but I'm just saying that, like, if a woman is trying to just like get in good with me because she thinks I've right. got money, like, I think I'm gonna be able to weed that out really fucking right, fast. But here's what I want to address. Oh. Here's what I want to address. If you're that dude and you're having success and you're doing things in your life and you're single and you're out there, what type of question should you ask these women to vet them? Because I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. There's women out there that see a dollar sign on a guy and they're like, Sugar Daddy just walked in. Like, there's a video of a girl that she's like. Here's the best place to find a sugar daddy. You don't go to clubs. You don't go to strip clubs. You go to the nice restaurants because there they are. They're all together. I call it the sugar daddy watering hole. I've seen this girl do this video. And she's like, they're all at the nicest restaurants in Miami or New York, or LA, whatever. And they're all eating together doing their thing. So you as a dating coach, what types of questions should a man ask women up front to kind of vet 
what the woman is looking for. I think it's less about questions and more about not leading with your money. So I like the Dave Chappelle joke where he says, like, when I have a date, I drive up in a uh, dumpster truck. And then when the girl's like, oh, I don't want to date a dumpster driver, he's like, I'm Dave Chappelle, bitch. So I kind of like that like, whole idea that you're not taking the girl to a fancy restaurant. You're not leading with your money. Uh, you're not, like, showing off your car. You're keeping all that hidden until you get to know her. And if she legitimately fucks with you without seeing all your wealth, then it's like a nice cherry on the top. So that would, that's what I would recommend. I feel never, like that is a very idealistic, hey, I just happened to be Dave Chappelle answer, yeah. but that's not the reality because we live in Miami. You know what it's like. You kind of got to give a little bit of crumbs, a little bit, and then you can kind of reveal. But, okay, but even to get the date with the girl... Like, if you're just some dude at the bar, you're going to have to say something to be like, well, I do this for work, and I do this. Like, I'm not saying you have to drive up in your Lamborghini and take her to home to your mansion, but you have to say, like, well, yeah, I'm actually, like, I own this bar. Or, like, yeah, my friends own this bar. Or, yeah, like, well, that, I'm, a, I'm an attorney. Or whatever. You're going to have to give them some sort of game. But you do have to have a conversation ask some questions. So I fully agree. Don't just let... You know, let the money do the talking for you. But you do have you to have ask to be, them questions. I think you're going to be cocksuited. What, what questions of would you actually ask them? I don't think there's a specific question I would ask the girl. I think I would just literally not do any of the stuff you're saying. I would not. If I was the owner of the bar, if I was just trying to get laid, yeah, sure, I would use that to my advantage. But if I was looking for a relationship, I would leave all that part out. I would not stress the fact that, you know, I'm friends with the owner. I would leave all that out. I think you can also just have a good game and make the girl laugh and build a lot of sexual tension and lead with that instead of leading with possessions of money. I think I answer, actually just answered my own question. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, that the answer is you need to ask them questions. Yeah. I don't think there's <laughs> a specific question. I think I just answered what I was okay. trying to ask you. If you're, I see this problem, whether it's in business or whether it's in dating, guys just want to talk about themselves. And it's like, selling isn't telling, selling is asking. Okay, so, hey, what are you doing here? Who are you here with? What are you guys looking to do tonight? And if you're getting, like, you'll get these answers. Yeah. We're just trying to find a dude with a yacht. I've, if I had a fucking dollar for every time a girl <laughs> said that, I'd be fucking gazillionaire. We're just trying to find a yacht to party on. It's like, cool, good luck with that yacht. If they're like, hey, yeah, I'm just visiting like my grandma and I'm in town. It's like, cool, family values, got it, boom, boom. Asking questions is the best thing you could do. I guess you could ask. I think you're saying there's no specific questions, which I, I think I, there I are. I changed my mind about it, actually. You could ask what type of guys does she usually date. You could ask okay, about her Okay, well, there we go, baby. You are changing try, your mind. Try, there's you, questions. You've changed my mind, yeah. You okay. could ask that, yeah. So what questions do you, would you ask? I would ask about her, like, once we're already talking or vibing, I would ask about her last relationship. I'd be like, oh, yeah, so what kind of guys do you are you usually into? Yeah. I would start off with that. She would tell me, be like, oh, cool. So do you are you with a typical Miami sugar baby? And then see how she responds to that. Yeah. She'd be like, no, you know, my last guy was broke. Okay, that's something. Where she's like, um... Well, I do like millionaires, and that's a different story. Uh, I think the question that we asked yesterday is actually probably one of the first questions you should ask a girl. How's your relationship with your dad? Yeah. I, think, I, I don't think you're going to ask that on a first date. Don't get me wrong. I mean, yeah. on a first time, you're not going to go up to a girl in a bar and be like, hey, how you doing? Can I buy you a drink? Uh, how do you get along with your dad? <laughs> but I think that is a very important question to ask a girl. Like, I don't think it's a very weird situation. I don't think it's a coincidence that Pearl is the girl she is, and she has an amazing relationship with her father. I think that is the reason... That is the pearl, the girl as she is. Would you agree or disagree? No, I agree. Um, I look up Give to my... Give a shout out to your dad I, right yeah, now shout real out quick. Dad. No, I look up to my dad a lot. Like, a lot of... Um, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the reasons, like, I do things that I do is, like, I was always trying to, like, make my dad proud. I don't, which is kind of lame, I know, but I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think your dad is really proud. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, like, dude, I'm going to give you some credit here. I've okay. seen your girl. She's cute. You nice. get girls. Okay. Despite the pajamas, you get girls. It's because of the pajamas. It's because of the pajamas. <laughs> I like pajamas. to stand out, you know? That's and a, a room full of guys with suits. Is that what they call you, the tripod? Life. That's what they called yeah, you in high exactly, school, right? Yeah, Respect. Uh, what was your game when you're talking to girls? Like, what kind of questions are you asking? What's, you, what's your game, right? Like, um, this is going to sound the most cuck shit in the world. Uh, I don't mean to make it sound that way. But, um, yeah, just like treating people like normal human beings usually works that thing that you just said about asking questions yeah. is that's not it that's not even a good it's a good pickup technique but that's a good yeah. conversational technique period that's just right? good for humans yeah if you're talking to people yes. and you ask them questions yes. and you refer back like jokingly to things they've said like it creates in the other person's mind that you have a huge interest in that person yeah. um, it is exceedingly rare that a guy or a girl on a date gets asked a lot of meaningful questions about who they are where they come from what they want to do how they feel about things if you can be the person to give somebody that conversation it leaves them like, 
like I'll have conversation. I'll come back. The person doesn't know a fucking thing about me because they didn't say shit. I'm like, oh yeah, like I feel like a really good conversation last night. Like I remember that like a lot. Um, so that's like a really good starting point, I think, is being but able to talk to somebody, connect to somebody. I will say that you are smarter than most, and you do have a gift of gab. So you're better than most. So you've got like someone said this the other day. They said, um, you know, like women want a provider, a protector to be present, and then they said that the protecting thing, you might have even been you. I, I think so. The it was, I think the it was, thing it was being a verbal protector, oh. meaning like, like some girls want a guy who's a protector, you thinking, oh, he's going to protect you. But sometimes it's just a guy who's quick and sharp and that can defend his woman that's true. verbally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I feel well, like that's you. Like somebody that's confident but not meek. I think confidence is always a good trait for mm -hmm. all men. A thousand and, percent yeah, agree. Yeah, for sure. If, if you ask a girl, like, give me your top three qualities, you probably ask a girl this a million times. It's got to be funny one, right? Yeah. You're always going to get funny, smart, handsome, yeah. attractive, good looking. There's like things going down the list. Confidence is at the top three of every woman's list. Have you not heard that a million times? No, I agree with you. Yeah. And it's I think a dating even, it even bleeds into other things as well. Like the type of humor that you can employ sometimes will come down to how confident you are That's about a person and everything, yeah. too. Yes. So.